Hey guys, welcome back to Legit Street Cars. Today, I'm going to look at a 2008 M3. This is a car uh, that has a bad engine. Maybe, the guy thinks it has a bad engine, he's selling it that way, um, but it starts and it runs for like 15 seconds, and he said it sounds pretty decent, and then it dies, and he thinks it needs a whole new engine. I really don't know, but it's only got like 40,000 miles on it. Clean title car. All right, so I had to take the 335i to go check out this M3. They're the same generation car. I just thought it'd be fitting. So I met the owner of the M3 at the address he told me to go to, and now he's saying we need to drive a block away. There's a Corvette over there. Um, we need to drive a block away to a speed shop to go see the car. So he is ahead of me in the blue Raptor and we should be there any minute. All right guys, so I am in a parking lot of a performance shop and uh, the owner doesn't really want to be on camera but he said I can film whatever I want and this car has been sitting here for a very, very long time. So when he sent me pictures of it, it was covered in snow. So not exactly sure when the last time it ran. I think this was a Mannheim auction car, so a dealer car that was probably broken in the service department and then they just traded it in on something but you can see with these brakes, got some pretty decent spacers here, but this thing has just been sitting forever. We have a dent here on the hood, and yeah, this is not a good sign. Look at look at all of the rubber around the windshield. It's got some aftermarket wheels. I wish it had the factory wheels, that'd be nice. Cracked taillight, same side as my 335i. We got some blue tips, and it's red with the tan interior, and this does have the dual clutch transmission so he's gonna go get the key right now while we're waiting for those keys i gotta play a little rise of kingdoms this is a mobile strategy game with over 60 million users and i gotta build a farm for my people here and it's got a great score on google play and in the app store here we go. Playing Rise of Kingdoms is so much fun. You can choose any of 12 historical civilizations, recruit generals, train soldiers, develop technology, create dream cities, and the Viking civilization is coming soon. Ragnar, Lodbrook, and Bajorn Ironside are leading the Viking warriors to battle. Download the game, choose your favorite Viking, and lead them to the Lori River to conquer the world. Rise of Kingdoms is free to download and free to play, so join me in battle and click on the link down below in the description box to download the game. Also, use coupon code ROKVIKINGS to get a civilization change prop by participating in an in-game event. I'll also leave you guys a second link down below to a contest where you'll have a chance to win three different iPhones, including an iPhone 12 Pro Max and much more. So a big thanks to Rise of Kingdoms for supporting this channel and I hope you guys love the game. Okay, here we go. 9-24-2018 is when it was sold at Mannheim, Milwaukee. So it's been over two years since it's ran, probably even longer than that because sometimes these things run through the auction a few times. So two, three years that it hasn't ran. Ugh, this thing is looking pretty rough, especially with only 40 something thousand miles. All right, so I have the key. It's probably really dead, yeah. Definitely dead. All right, let's get the blade key out here. So yeah, the Carfax on this car checks out. No accidents. It's really got 40 something thousand miles on it. And uh, yeah, wow. This is pretty bad. Does not look like a very maintained car right off the bat. Look at all of this. These are just little signs that the car was just kind of beat on. No one really cared about it. Yeah. All right. I mean, nothing too crazy though. I mean, we can fix all of that. I kind of wish it had the black interior. Um, but yeah, this has the dual clutch automated manual, whatever you want to call it. So this is a fast shifting transmission. It can definitely be kind of problematic, but let's go get a jumper. Oh, and this does have the iDrive. My 335i doesn't have that. Um, let's go get the jumper and see what happens. He says it will run. All right, I got the jumper connected under the hood and here is the engine. Nothing is taken apart. The belt is still there. The f Oh, wait a minute, the fan, the fan's missing. <laughs> I'm like, why is there so much room in here? So the fan is missing for some reason, so that is gone. Um, but other than that, it doesn't look taken apart. So let's uh, let's see what happens here. All right, here we go. Oh, all right, we got power. No, nothing. All right, we're gonna have to go right to the battery. This isn't working out. 
But let's see, how many miles does this thing have? 48, 48,000 miles, wow. All right, I got the jumper connected back here and we have a bunch of stuff removed and here is the engine fan. So that's a good thing, probably an expensive part. So let's see what happens. Nothing, not starting. Not a good sign. So he showed me that the tow truck driver, when he had to tow this thing, had to kind of pull this shifter apart, stick a tool in here to get it into neutral. So let's see what happens here. No, nothing. Two big jumpers should start this four liter V8 and see what happens. It's turning, it's firing. Oh, there we go. All right, sounds okay. Doesn't sound bad. Huh. It's running. It's got a little bit of a tick. And he said that it won't run for long. Of course, we got to check engine light on so we can see what those codes are. How long will it stay running for, you think? Okay. All right. So he said it should start to die here shortly. Oh. Oh, there we go. It's dead. And then will it restart? Let's try it. Okay, it restarts. It's definitely got a tick. Ah, here we go, here we go. Gonna die. Maybe this doesn't need an engine? I don't know, it's not that bad. You hear that rattle? Yeah, that's the exhaust touching stuff. Overall, the car looks to be, you know, kind of hacked up, but if it runs and drives, this could be a good deal. All right, I just turned the second jumper pack back on. I want to see if I can get it to hold a rev. Oh, it sounds so bad. Right now, I'd say the timing sounds like it's off when it's cranking, but it runs pretty smooth. It's got a miss or something going on there. Woo! What do we got going on back here? A uh, little smoke out of the exhaust. Doesn't smell horrible. Doesn't smell too oily. Wow, this is a big gamble, guys. This is a huge gamble. I mean, it could definitely need some serious engine work and it's sort of listed as needing an engine. The guy's not sure, but he's kind of assuming the worst. And to be honest with you, it's at a speed shop right now that works on primarily European cars from what it looks like. So I'm sure this thing was brought in and diagnosed and he's not gonna just sell it because it doesn't need an engine. So I always assume the worst in these situations, especially with a problematic car like this. All right guys, I'm under the car checking it out, but I also wanted to let you guys know that the guy that owns it let me know that they did take the oil filter out because I was like, hey, it's at a performance Euro shop. Like, did you guys look at the engine? He's like, yeah, they took the oil filter out and it had metal shavings in it. So he seems like a pretty honest guy for telling me that. So basically I can say without any hesitation that this thing is gonna need an engine. I think the bearings let loose. I think this thing was just beaten to hell. They didn't change the oil and these already had some bearing issues from the factory, but underneath here looks pretty decent. We got some kind of aftermarket exhaust going on, I believe. You guys see that? You guys see that? That's the rear crash bar. And you know, I love to check stickers. I checked the sticker, the date code lines up and it looks to be made of carbon fiber. I, if it is, I did not know that. That's really cool and kind of weird but I'm sure you M3 guys know all about this but is that carbon fiber back here if so sweet so yeah it's got these aftermarket tips here and then it's got some funky looking mufflers something going on here and uh, yeah I think that's really the only aftermarket part on the car because it still has the factory catalytic converters so they might have just done kind of a cat back system but underneath here Looks really good. I don't think it's been wrecked, at least in the rear. 
and the paint definitely needs some work but overall it's pretty solid it's pretty straight i don't really see much corrosion underneath the car looks like it was kind of keyed there that might come out and then there's a decent amount of ppf so this looks faded but this will actually peel right off and did they do the entire front end they did the bumper so there's ppf on the front bumper nice doesn't look too bad though overall. All right, so here's what I'm thinking. This is what I'm looking at right here. I'm looking at an 08 M3 with 48,000 miles and a clean title with a bad engine, which can cost about eight, $9,000 used, which is crazy expensive. Um, this thing needs brakes all the way around. The interior is pretty beat up. We have to do the trim around the windshield here. We would definitely have to get, at the very least, this driver's seat fixed. That might clean up or we have to find a used part. This passenger side looks to be in good shape. The back seat, the leather here looks a little weird. Not the end of the world. We might be able to clean that. Headliner looks good. Everything else in here looks pretty nice. You know, we'll get a cool carbon fiber steering wheel if uh, this ends up being kind of a longer term car, if I really like it after putting an engine in it. But, uh, it's not bad, so now I gotta, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. You always gotta take a second look. Sorry, I'm whispering, <laughs> I'm like nitpicking this guy's car and he's pretty close. Whoa, look at this. That is not good. That is all filler in there. It's been definitely hit in this area. Huh. Wow. Yeah, this has all been filled in right here. They didn't do the best job. Man, this thing was just beat. Poor car. Let's check the other side. Look at this, the tires have been hitting right here. So the paint has peeled away. It's actually starting to rust. That's a shame. So that would all need to be buzzed down and repainted. So we actually have a decent amount of body work to do. And there is a gamble on what we find under there, under that Bondo or body filler. So this is all gonna play in the negotiation. That is for sure but a cool project, I'm definitely interested. All right, I wanna see what these faults are. Look at that, 32 faults in the DME, the engine's computer, amazing. Look at how many control modules. This is what gets newer cars in trouble. I mean, something's gonna fail. Let's kick this off with the engine computer. Read codes if you dare. All right, I knew we were gonna have Vanos issues here or at least codes. So lots of Vanos codes all over the place. He did tell me they did a little work on the Vano system. Not exactly sure what they replaced, but if there's metal throughout the system, it's probably compromised. And we got a bunch of misfires, of course. Impairing exhaust emissions. So yeah, this thing was misfiring bad. And what stinks about buying a car with a bad motor, especially a car like this where we can't really drive it, the brakes are shot, the tires are shot, and it'll probably die out in like two seconds of driving it. Um, but the issue there is we don't know the condition of the transmission. So if you buy a car with a bad engine, you know, you're taking a gamble with the trans too. Um, okay. What do we have here? Message, torque reset, error, speed. Yeah, this is going to be tough. This is going to be tough to figure out right now. Normally we would blow this stuff out and just go for a ride and see what comes back. But yeah, lots of codes as expected. All right, so there's lots of other codes in here. I'm not going to go through all of them. Uh, I think a lot of these, the vast majority, would just clear out immediately, especially if we had a good battery in this car. Um, but anyway, there is our diagnosis of all 50 trillion control units. 29, 29, not too bad. Okay, so I just left the BMW. I'm back at home base. I got to go to work. I spoke to my buddy OJ at Fluid Motor Union. If you guys have been following the channel for a while, you know he is the BMW guy. And I was just running a few things past him. And he's like, wait a minute. He's like, is this thing red? And I'm like, yeah. And he's like, a few years ago, I had a guy that owned some kind of little Mercedes like performance shop, which is kind of looked like where I was. There were only Mercedes and a couple BMWs in the parking lot and they were working on them in there too. And he's like, this guy brought me the engine out of that same generation uh, E92 M3. And he, it was a junkyard engine and he needed bearings put in it. He wanted bearings put in it before it went into an M3 he had just bought that had a bad engine. So OJ did this job for him. And then the guy was complaining that the timing was off and it was setting a bunch of Vanos codes or something like that. But OJ didn't touch anything to do with the timing. He just did the bearings and had no idea what the condition of the engine was. So he said, hey, bring it by. We'll figure it out. We'll help you. 
the guy never called him. Just it, He just disappeared. So he is going to dig up pictures to see because the guy had sent him uh, pictures of the car and the engine and stuff like that. We're going to see if we can kind of like match it up. Um, maybe. He's like, this is from three years ago, which is around the time it was sold at the auction. So a little bit of a mystery going on here. So I don't know if this engine's already been replaced and something got messed up in there. It did have a bunch of Vanos codes. Um, so anyway, I offered the guy $7,500 for this car. Uh, used car prices are out of control right now, but that thing, if it was clean without a bad engine, uh, would be maybe like a $25,000 car. So I figure I'm going to need, if I buy like a used engine, these things are expensive, plus all the miscellaneous gaskets, whatever, I'm going to be like $10,000 into the engine doing it myself. Um, so this guy, he came back at $10,000, um, and then it needs the body work, it needs some interior work. So it's going to be pretty close. It's not going to be like a crazy steal, even at 7,500, but I'm definitely not paying 10 because otherwise I could just go out and buy one that's not broken. Um, but yeah, sometimes I, you know, got to make these deals to make these YouTube videos happen, but I will break down the cost of everything. As you guys know, of course, if I buy this thing, there will be a reveal video for it and we'll get right into it probably at the new shop. This could potentially be my first new shop project, but we'll see. Uh, anyway, with that, guys, I hope you like this impromptu kind of last minute video. I didn't even shower this morning yet. I got to run in and shower before work. <laughs> uh, but I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please let me know in the comments. Do you want to see, you know, random days where I go out and I do cool car stuff like inspect potential future project cars? Uh, let me know in the comments. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it. Share the video. Subscribe if you're new. And most importantly, have an awesome day. I'll catch all of you in the next video.